Good morning, my dear students. This, this is uh, teacher Kelvin Fudiwa Nyabura from Bethlehem Senior School. I'm here to take you through uh, business studies, continuation of the topic of insurance that we were doing last time. So our topic that we are going to deal with today is insurance. The subject is business studies. Today is the 20 April 2021 and the topic is insurance. So we are just uh, proceeding from where we left. In the previous lesson we defined what insurance is and we saying that insurance is a contract between an insured and an insurer where the insured transfers financial responsibility to the insurer. After that, we said that after an insured takes an insurance cover, he <coughs> is supposed to pay regular amount of money. That is what we call premiums. He is supposed to pay regular amount of money, and that is what we call premiums. After paying premiums, we are just reviewing on what we did. After paying premiums, the insurance company creates a common pool of fund where those premiums that are paid are deposited. Different insurance pays uh, different regular premiums where they are deposited by the insurer to the common pool of fund. And this is what we called a pooling of risk in the previous lesson. And we gave the benefit of the pooling of risk. After that, we dealt with the importance of insurance, where we said insurance is very important because it enables a business to continue, continuity of a business. We said an insurance is very important because it raises revenue to the government through payment of taxes. This insurance company requires a license. We said that an insurance is very important also because it encourages uh, savings, uh, just a review. The importance of insurance, we said one is uh, uh, continuity, continuity in business, revenue to the government, it earns revenue to the government. We also say that it encourages savings, it encourages savings, where today we look at different savings schemes in uh, insurance, that is in life assurance, as we'll be looking at the classes of insurance. So it encourages savings. We also say that investment creates confidence, creates confidence in investors, creates confidence in investors, where we say that an investor can venture into a more profitable business, which is risky, because even if the loss occurs, he is going to be compensated or paid back by the insurance company. We also say that uh, insurance helps to spread risk, to spread, helps to spread risk, that is a spreading of risk among different insurance. The insurance who has paid a lot of premiums to the insurance company maybe does not suffer a loss, but the insurant who has paid less amount of money suffers the loss. So that risk is spread among all the insurant who has paid that money so that this insurant who has suffered the loss can be compensated. We also saying that insurance company is important because it encourages investment. People can invest in insurance company. That is a part of what we covered in the previous lesson. And finally, in the previous lesson, we covered the principles of insurance. Where we say that insurance has principles, the code of conduct, the principles that govern insurance. And that is the principles of insurance. That is what we looked at last year, principles of insurance. Because we discussed, I'm just going to mention them as a reminder where we said we have the principle of utmost good faith. Principle of utmost good faith. You must give the information truthfully and faithfully to the insurance company. Principle of subrogation. Principle of subrogation. 
where we say that when the insured is compensated, the wreckage or the remains becomes the property of the insurance company. For example, if you have a vehicle that experiences an accident, you will be compensated and then the wreckage becomes the property of the insured. Principle of indemnity. The aim of the insurance company is to return back the insured to his former financial position. Uh, the other one is principle of uh, insurable interest, insurable interest. You only take an insurance cover from a property that you are having a direct gain from, such that if the loss occurs, you are going to suffer direct loss. We also talked about the principle of contribution, the principle of contribution, where we saying that if you've taken an insurance cover with two or more different insurance companies, the companies will contribute to ones uh, compensating you. That is the principle of contribution. And the last principle is the principle of proximate cause. Principle of proximate cause. That for you to be compensated after the loss occurring, or, 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 or uh, after the occurrence of a loss, the loss must be close to the risk insured against. And I gave an example that if you've taken an insurance cover to cover your goods against theft, if they are damaged by fire, you cannot be compensated because there is no proximate cause. My dear students, we now begin our content that we are going to cover today, and we start with the classes of insurance. Classes of insurance. There are two main classes of insurance. I want us to cover classes of insurance. Classes of insurance. We have two main classes of insurance. One, life assurance. Life assurance. And we have general, also known as property property insurance so we have life assurance and we have general or property insurance you can ask why do we call life assurance yet we are calling property insurance we we say that we don't have life insurance because life cannot be insured by an insurance company life is only insured by god because insurance simply means being taken back to where you are before the loss occurs. So when we call life insurance, we'll be saying that an insurance company can't bring you back to life, which is not possible. It's only God who can insure your life. So that's why we call it life assurance. You are assured of your life such that in the event of occurrence of your death, you are beneficiaries or the people whom you named in the life assurance policy are going to be compensated. Then we have general or property insurance, which exclusively covers property. Like you have a premises, you have a vehicle, you take a property or general insurance cover against. So we begin with the first one, which is life assurance policy. Life assurance policy, that is the first one. Life assurance. Life assurance. So at the life assurance policy, we categorize it into other two main classes. Life assurance policy is categorized into other two main classes. We have one, whole life policy, whole life policy, and we have endowment policy. We have endowment policy. So this is what we are saying. We have two main classes of insurance, life assurance and general or property insurance. Under life assurance, we have two main classes of life assurance. We have whole life policy and endowment policy. Let us get the difference between these two main classes under life assurance 
policy. Life assurance policy, again, is classified into two, whole life policy and endowment policy. Whole life policy is a policy where the assured should pay premiums until his or her death. That's why it's called whole life policy, where the assured pays premiums until death. Whole life policy is an, a, an insurance policy where the assured is supposed to pay premiums until his death. And compensation in whole life policy only occurs after the death of the assured. Let us get this. For example, you've taken a whole life policy with APA insurance company. You will continue paying premiums in that company until the time that you die, that's when you'll stop paying premiums. So compensation, or you will be paid back after you are dead. So you are not going to benefit, but it is your beneficiaries or you are dependent, maybe you are children, who are going to benefit from the whole life assurance policy compensation. That is whole life. Endowment policy is a policy where benefit goes to both the assured and the beneficiaries. Because in the event of death of the assured, the beneficiaries are going to be compensated and still, if the, the, the assured is not dead, he can be receiving some regular amount of money after expiry of a given period of time. So sh in short, a dormant policy is a policy whereby you pay premiums for a given period of time. Then after expiry of the given period of time, you stop paying premiums and you will be compensated. If death occurs before the agreed period of time has expired, then your beneficiaries or dependents are going to, bene uh, are going to benefit or they are going to be compensated. So for us to understand well or better on uh, the, differ the difference between the whole life insurance policy and endowment policy, let us look at the differences between the whole life policy and the endowment policy. Differences, you can be asked in the exam. Attend, 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 attend. Attend marks question. Differentiate between whole life policy and endowment policy. Differentiate between whole life policy and endowment policy. So you come up with a table. Remember, both of these policies are life policy. One is whole life, the other one is endowment. So you are told, differentiate or give differences between whole life policy and endowment policy. One difference is, in whole life policy, premiums are paid throughout the life of the assured. Premiums are paid throughout the life, throughout the life of the assured. Premiums are paid throughout the life of the assured. In a dormant policy, premiums are paid, premiums are paid at a given period of time, at a given period of time. So if you've taken a, an whole life insurance policy, you'll pay premiums until you die. If you have taken an endowment policy, you'll pay premiums for just a given period of time, for just a given period of time. The other one is, in whole life policy, benefits goes to the beneficiaries. Benefits goes to the beneficiaries. Benefits goes to the beneficiaries or the dependents. Let's call them the dependents. Benefits goes to the dependents. Well, in endowment policy, benefits goes, benefits goes to both, 
to both the assured and the dependent. So only the dependent benefit in whole life policy because compensation happens after death. While in endowment policy, benefit goes to both the assured and the dependent. And the assured benefits if he does not die after the expiry of agreed period of time, while in case of death of the assured, then the beneficiaries or the dependents are going to get the benefits because compensation does not only occur after death, but compensation may occur after expiry of an agreed period of time. The other uh, difference is compensation happens Compensation happens after death. Compensation happens after death of the assurant. After death of the assurant, that is in whole life policy, you will only be paid after you are dead. Not you who is going to benefit, but it's your dependents. While in a domain policy, compensation, compensation happens compensation happens after expiry after expiry of agreed period of time compensation happens after expiry of agreed period of time and finally whole life policy aims aims at financial security aims at financial security of the dependent while endowment policy aims at financial security aims at financial security of both the dependent both the assured and the dependent both the assured and dependent so these are the four main differences between whole life policy and endowment policy. Whole life policy premiums are paid throughout the life of the assurance. Endowment premiums are paid for a given period of time. Whole life policy benefits goes to the dependents. Endowment policy benefits goes to both the dependents and the assured. Whole life policy compensation happens after the death of the assured. Uh, a domain policy compensation happens after a given period of time. Whole life policy aims at financial security of the dependent, while a domain policy aims at the financial security of both the dependent and the assured. So these are the differences between whole life policy and a domain policy. Now, after that, I want us to get to the characteristics of life assurance and also the characteristics of general insurance. I believe that this is well understood. The characteristics of life assurance. So we've already dealt with two policies under life assurance. Two policies under life assurance. You just need to know a domain policy is after a given period of time and it benefits both the assured and the uh, bene beneficiaries while whole life policy benefits only the dependent because premiums are paid throughout the life and also compensation happens after the death of the assured. Now, what are the characteristics? Characteristics, characteristics of, characteristics of a life assurance policy, life assurance policy policy and then we look at characteristics of b uh, general or property general or property insurance so characteristics of life assurance policy one is life assurance policy exclusively covers life Exclu exclusively covers life Two, life assurance policy has surrender value. 
I'll explain what surrender value is. Has surrender value. Dre, life assurance policy has maturity date. Has maturity date. I'll also explain what that means. Next, in life assurance policy, premiums paid, premiums paid depends. Premium spent depends on the assured ability to pay, on the assured ability to pay, ability to pay. And five, life assurance policy is a long-term contract. It's a long-term contract. It's a long-term contract and does not require, does not require periodic renewal. Periodic, periodic renewal. So we mentioned the characteristics of general insurance. Then I will explain, or, or first, let me explain the characteristics of life assurance policy. We have said that one characteristic of life assurance policy, it exclusively covers life. So you cannot cover property if you have taken a life assurance policy. Exclusively means it only covers life and life only. Her surrender value is the second characteristic. This is the meaning of surrender value. Surrender value is the amount of money that is refundable to the assured if he or she terminates pre pay payment of premiums before the expiry of a great period of time. Listen well. Surrender value is the amount of money that is refundable or that the insurance company refunds to a life assured, that is a person who has taken a life assurance policy, if he or she terminates payment of premiums before the agreed period of time. So it has surrender value. If you say the agreed period of time was two years, and you say that after one year you are not able to pay premiums, you'll be given part of the money that you had paid in one year. That is what we call surrender value. Has maturity date. Maturity date is that expiry date. That it is a contract that, uh, uh, for, for, for instance, we send there are two types of life assurance policy. And we send in endowment policy, premiums are paid for just a given period of time. And compensation happens after expiry of that given period of time. That is what we call maturity date. Where you are told you've taken a life assurance uh, policy, that is, you have taken a life assurance cover, and then this cover, you'll only be compensated after two years. So that date that it expires is what we call maturity date. Premiums paid by the assured depends on the assured's ability to pay in life assurance. How much do you earn and how much can you be able to pay as premiums? A uh, life assurance policy is a long-term contract and does not require periodic renewal. You don't keep on renewing a life assurance policy like the way we renew a general or property insurance. So the characteristics of general insurance, now we go to general insurance, the characteristics of general insurance are like the opposite of the characteristics of life assurance. One characteristic of general or property insurance is that it exclusively, exclusively covers property. General insurance covers property and property alone. Two, has no surrender value. Has no surrender value. If you have taken an insurance cover against damage of your vehicle through an accident and you the vehicle takes 10 years without experiencing an accident there is no amount of money that you are going to be refunded even if you pay premiums for 100 years you'll never be refunded if it's property insurance so it has no surrender value three has no maturity date 
general insurance has no maturity date. That means that there is no agreed period of time that will expire for you to be compensated. You are only going to be compensated if you suffer loss, but not after a given period of time. Premiums paid by general insurance, uh, insured, premiums paid, premiums paid depends on the value of the property. Depends on the value of the property. The higher the value of your property, the higher amount of premiums that you are going to pay under general insurance. So the premiums paid depends on the value of property. The lower the value of property, the lower the premiums that you are going to pay. The higher the value of property, the higher the premiums you are going to pay. And the general insurance is a short-term contract. Is a short-term contract. Is a short-term contract that requires is a short-term contract that requires periodic renewal. Periodic renewal. So those people who have taken a general insurance cover, they can tell you that they keep on renewing. Each and every time you go to the insurance company, pay premiums and they renew your contract. Because a property or a general insurance cover is a short-term contract which requires periodic renewal. And therefore, my dear students, these are the characteristics of life assurance policy and the characteristics of general insurance. If in the exam you are asked the differences between life assurance and general insurance, you will use these characteristics. The way we have analyzed the five of them, they are the differences between general and life insurance. They are the differences between general and life insurance. So that is well understood. When you want to take a life assurance policy, or a general insurance cover, you go to the insurance company. When you go to the insurance company, there is something that you are going to do, and there are procedures that are going to be followed. That is what I want us to look at. Procedures of obtaining an insurance policy. Procedure of obtaining an insurance cover. If you want to take an insurance cover, there are procedures that are followed. So we are still moving on well. Procedure of obtaining. Procedure of obtaining. To obtain is to get. Obtaining an insurance. Procedure of obtaining an insurance policy. Now we have learned about the insurance life assurance, general insurance, and you are asking yourself, Teacher Kevin, now how can I get this insurance cover? This is the procedure that you can use to get the insurance cover. One is when you want to get an insurance cover and you go to the insurance company, you become a proposer. You are proposing. So the first thing is feeling. Filling a proposal form. When you fill in a proposal form, now you've gone to the insurance company. The people there, uh, the, 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 the people who are in the insurance company, they'll give you a form. It's called a proposal form that you are supposed to fill in all your details. If you are taking an, an insurance cover that is general, you fill in the value of the property and each and every details that you are asked, like the age, your health, your resident, where you live, your occupation, where you work, and you must fill in the form faithfully because any lies that you'll fill in the form will make you not to be paid if the loss occurs. After you have filled in a proposal form, you fill in a proposal form, the next thing is the insurance Co company have people that we call actuaries. And these actuaries, they are people who determine the amount of premiums that you are supposed to pay. So after you fill in a proposal form, the next procedure is determining, 
determine the premiums to be paid. Determine the premiums to be paid. Right, then you are told you'll be paying 5,000 shillings per month. That is the premiums you are supposed to pay. And then you are asked, okay, my dear client, you are supposed to pay 5,000 shillings per month after the premium. And therefore, for you to get the cover, you must pay the first premium. And that brings us to the that uh, procedure, payment of first premium. Payment of the first premium. So you'll pay your first premium, so 5,000, if that is the amount that has been determined. After you, are, you have paid the first premium, the next procedure is they will issue you with a cover note. Issuing a cover note. They will issue you with a cover note. A cover note acts as an evidence that you have taken an insurance cover. Like when you go to uh, get a, a, an identification card, ID, national ID, you'll be given a waiting card to show that you are waiting for the main ID, for the, for, for the original ID. In this case, when you pay the first premium, you'll be issued with a cover note as you wait for the policy to be processed. And the final procedure is now issuing of the policy. Issuing of the policy. Issuing of the policy. Now the policy is the document that shows the contract between you, the insured, and the insurance company. This is the procedure of obtaining an insurance policy. Filling a proposal form. After you fill in a proposal form, they will determine the amount of premiums that you're supposed to pay, and then they will ask you to pay the first premium. After you've paid the first premiums, they will issue we, you with a cover note. Then after 30 days, you'll go back to the insurance company and they will issue you now with the insurance policy, which is now the original document that carries the contract between you and the insurance company. Now that you have taken an insurance cover and you continue paying the premiums and a loss occurs, what will happen? Because you are asking yourself, now that I've taken an insurance cover, yes, teacher Kevin, I have the procedure of taking an insurance cover. If my vehicle experiences an accident, what will I do? This is what you'll do, and this is the procedure of making an insurance claim. Procedure of making an insurance claim. Procedure of making an insurance claim. Procedure of making an insurance procedure of making an insurance claim. A claim is a demand for payment. Yes, you demand. It's your right. You have been paying premiums. Your vehicle has experienced an accident and you have paid premiums for 10 years. It's your right to be compensated. And that's why we have a procedure that you should follow to make this demand. A claim is a demand to be compensated or to be paid back. So if your vehicle experiences an accident, immediately you rush to the insurance company and you inform them. That is the first procedure, notifying the insurer. Notifying the insurer. That is the first thing that you do. Once you notify the insurer, you've rushed to the insurance company. Yes, I've come to uh, this. Is this a PA insurance company? Yes. I took a, pro a property insurance cover to insure against accident of my vehicle. My vehicle has experienced an accident. You have notified them. What they'll do, they'll give you a claim form. So the next procedure is filling in a, a claim form. So you'll fill a claim form and explain how the loss has occurred and the value of property that has been damaged through that loss. After you fill in a claim form, the insurance company manager will call some people and send them to the ground to investigate. Compensation is not as easy as that. They must investigate and see whether the accident was accidental or intentional. So the next procedure is investigation. 
investigation of the claim. You have filled in a claim form, then they will call their officials and send them to the ground. If you are taking an insurance cover against damage of your premises by fire, they will send officials to go there and investigate whether fire was accidental or intentional. If it was intentional, you are not going to be compensated. If you lied on the value of that premises, you are not going to be compensated. So that's why they must investigate. And as they investigate, they are preparing a report, which we call assessment report. That is the next procedure. Preparation. Preparation of assessment report. Preparation of assessment uh, report. This is a report that gives the details on what they have found out or the findings from the investigation that they have been doing. So preparation of assessment report. And then finally, the manager or the officials in the insurance company will go through the assessment report and establish whether you are supposed to be compensated or not. So from the assessment report, if they establish that indeed you are supposed to be compensated, that brings us to the last procedure, compensation or payment of the compensation. Compensation or payment. Payment, yeah. So payment is made to you or compensation where now you'll be compensated because indeed after investigation it has been established that this accident was accidental this damage was accidental and not intentional so this is the procedure of, of making an insurance claim if the loss have account you go to the insurance company notify the insurance company that my property has been damaged by fire. After notifying the insurance company, they will give you a claim form where you will fill in the details of how the accident happened. After you have filled in a claim form, they will send people on the ground to investigate the claim and establish whether truthfully the claim was accidental or intentional. As they are investigating, they will be preparing an assessment report. This is a report that shows the findings of what they have found on the ground concerning the claim that you made as the assured or the insured. And then finally, if they go through the assessment report and they realize that the claim was accidental, you will not be compensated. But if they realize that the claim was, uh, uh, sorry, if the claim was accidental, you will be compensated. If they realize that the claim was intentional, you will not be compensated. And therefore, the last procedure of making an insurance claim is where now they compensate you or they pay you back and they return you back to your former financial position according to the principle of indemnity. Then you will give them back the remains of the property that has been damaged after you have been compensated according to the principle of subrogation. And you'll only be compensated if you have talked the truth according to the principle of utmost good faith. You are only compensated if you had insurable interest or you are benefiting directly from that property according to the principle of insurable interest. And you have, if you had taken an insurance cover with more than an, uh, one insurance company, then the two companies will contribute to one's compensation according to the principle of contribution. If you had taken an insurance cover against damage by fire and fire happens, you'll be compensated according to the principle of proximate cause. My dear student, I hope that whatever we have discussed is well understood, that is well 
uh, good for uh, today in insurance, the topic of insurance. As I conclude, my dear student, I am an author of this is my first book, Never Give Up. Never Give Up will help you to deal with shameful scenarios, to become the change you need, how to believe in God in the midst of chaos, God will fulfill his purpose in your life, attitude changes your destiny, overcoming fear of failure, the healing power of God, and the remaining forecast. My dear student, this book will also help you improve in the subject that you are weak in. If you read this and you, are, you have been performing uh, poorly in, for example, mathematics, it also has strategies on how you can improve in various subjects. If you need a copy of this book, you can contact me, draw 0705-845-747. If you need a copy of Never Give Up, you can contact me via 0705-845-747 and you'll get a copy of the book and your life will never be the same again. Indeed, never give up in any situation of your life. Thank you very much, my dear student. I, Teacher Kelvin Fude Wanyabura from Bethlehem Senior School, have been with you taking you through insurance company. And I thank you for your time. And I believe after the end of it all, you have understood. May God bless you abundantly and never forget to pray. To pray before you do anything in this world. My name is Teacher Kelvin Fudiwa Nyambura from Bethlehem Senior School. God bless you for your time.